Welcome to the next video in the Patterns in Nature topic. This video will be looking at the dot point, describe the role of teeth in increasing the surface area of complex foods for exposure to digestive chemicals. So fish, amphibians, reptiles and mammals all have teeth. Modern birds, however, do not have teeth. They only have a beak. So over evolution, uh, birds used to have very small teeth and over time, those teeth have become useless. So with evolution and natural selection, those teeth have been removed and the birds just have a beak. So teeth are essential for the first stage of digestion, which is the mechanical or physical breakdown of food. The second stage, known as uh, the chemical breakdown, involves enzymes and, as we know, happens in the stomach. Enzymes are able to work better when they have a higher surface area to work on. So when we put our food into our mouth and our teeth break it down, we increase the surface area. So we've talked about increasing surface area for so many things. And again, we're going to talk about it now in relation to the importance of digestion and how increasing the surface area makes it so much easier for chemical digestion to take place. So we're going to look at the teeth of omnivores, herbivores and carnivores and have a look at how different each of the different groups of animals' teeth are. And in particular, we'll be looking at the four different uh, types of teeth that we have. So we'll start off by having a look at the teeth of omnivores. So humans are omnivores. So this is probably the easiest one for us to relate to as we all have these types of teeth within our mouths. So omnivores, as I said, have all, te all four teeth types. And there's really no major variation in the size or the shape of these uh, different teeth. So the four main teeth type include the incisors, which are our front teeth, which are used for uh, grasping, holding and biting our food. So, you know, when you bite into an apple, you use those front teeth to really grasp the food, hold it, and then you pull it away from your mouth and it uh, bites off the piece of food. We then have canines as, as we move further around from the front of our mouth, which we can also sometimes refer to as our fangs as they're the ones that sort of stick out to a point. And they're used for stabbing, tearing flesh and gripping prey. Obviously, we don't need to be gripping our prey as such because the food that we eat is usually uh, killed and cooked or we do eat um, some animal material raw, but we don't actually need to use our canines for gripping prey, but we still use those to stab into hard food and obviously to tear meat while we are eating it. Our premolars are our cheek teeth and they're used for chewing and cutting flesh and breaking the hard parts such as bones and shells. And lastly, we have our molars, which are our back teeth. And as we can see here, they're quite flat in comparison to our other types of teeth and they're used for grinding and chewing and they generally have ridges to crush and grind food. And the problem with those ridges is they're usually the teeth that you get food stuck in because those ridges are quite uh, pronounced and again the ridges help to increase the surface area of our teeth which therefore helps to increase the surface area of our food. So let's have a look at the teeth of herbivores. So if you ever had a look in the mouth of a herbivore either a, you know if you have a pet rabbit or um, if you've been out on a farm and seen horses or cattle you'll see that their teeth are very very different to the teeth of humans. So grazers are herbivores that um, eat grass, so horses, cows, goats, etc. And browsers are those that eat uh, vegetation from trees and shrubs, such as uh, koalas, giraffes. Um, I can't think of another one off the top of my head, possibly rabbits. Okay, um, so they have slightly different teeth because they uh, have slightly different requirements in order to break down the food that they eat. So the back teeth of Herbivores are adapted for grinding and chewing because their diet is so abrasive and high in fiber. It needs to be broken down really, really well before it moves into the stomach. Uh, the cellulose of plants is quite difficult to break down, so they need to really make sure that they chew it up as much as possible before it passes into the next phase of digestion. So herbivores have incisors, which are usually long and quite sharp to help them bite off vegetation. If you've ever been bitten by a horse, you'll know that they have huge teeth and they're really there to help pull that vegetation either out of the ground or off the trees. 
their canines are usually absent and basically what happens is as we can see here in this lower picture here we have this huge gap between the front teeth and then the premolars and the molars and basically this helps uh, the animal to chew their food and basically the manipulation of the food um, by they use their tongue to roll it around so they've got a lot more space in their mouth in order to be able to do that also allows the chewed food and the unchewed food to be kept separate. So as I said, uh, herbivores need to keep the food in their mouth for a greater period of time in order to break it down as much as possible. So they're continuously eating food, but at the same time they're still chewing food at the back of their mouths. And lastly, our premolars and our molars, or the herbivores, premolars and molars, are very broad and flat, again, uh, equipped with ridges in order to help break down the cell wall, which is made up of cellulose and can be quite difficult to do so. Then we move on to the carnivores. So large carnivores, such as tigers, lions, bears, usually prey on other vertebrates, so they are required to hunt and kill them. So they obviously need larger teeth in order to initially kill their prey before they can eat it. Smaller carnivores usually prey on insects and are sometimes referred to as insectivores. So they have um, teeth that are adapted to piercing through the cuticles of the insects, so the shells, the exoskeletons, so that they can um, eat the insect. So the incisors, as we can see here, they're extremely prominent, okay, quite jagged, and they help to chisel and chip and tear away the flesh from the bone. The canines, are quite pronounced as well, conical in shape and specialised for holding and killing prey. So they're the ones that puncture the, um, the flesh and really get in and do the most damage. Then we have the premolars, which we can see are all different in shape and quite jagged as well. And they puncture and crush the exoskeletons of insects as well as help to grind down the bones and the shells of larger animals. And last, lastly, the molars have very deep cusps in order to chew the meat and increase the surface area. So you know yourself, if you're eating meat, you use your front teeth to break it up and then the back teeth you help to chew it and to increase the surface area. So by looking at this video, we've seen how different types of animals have different teeth depending on their diet and how basically each of those different types of teeth, their overall job is to increase the surface area of the food so then when it passes into the digestive system, it's able to be broken down a lot easier by the enzymes and the acids that are found in the stomach, which we'll be looking at in our next video. So that brings us to the end of this video. So thank you for watching.